All right, today in this big box, we have the ThinkPad P17 Gen 2. With almost no hyperbole, is one of the most powerful laptops you can buy today. It did ship in this box, which I find odd. Like, no, you know, for such an expensive device, there's not a lot of external packaging. Let's check out what's in the box. ThinkPad paperwork, P17 Gen 2 here classic thinkpad charger 230 watts big beefy power supply obviously we're gonna have three prongs here and we'll have the classic thinkpad square port here even though it was only shipped in that box it has this sturdy padding in it and the box itself is relatively thick cardboard this is a beefcake this bad boy is eight pounds i believe Woo! So yeah, that's some, that's a beefy boy. Now it's classic ThinkPad, that kind of dark, uh, I mean, it's sort of black, I guess. ThinkPad logo up here, Lenovo branding here, and those little gunmetal gray looking pieces there. Starting in the front, uh, there's nothing. Starting on the right hand side, we have a full size HDMI port, a USB-A port, what I would believe would be the SIM card tray and the headphone jack. On the back, we have an Ethernet port, the power supply, Thunderbolt 4, more Thunderbolt 4, and then a USB-C. Full-size SD card slot and one more USB-A slot, and then, of course, the locking mechanism for like a Kensington lock or something of that nature. All right, of course, we can check out the old one-finger lift action. No problem. That is a big boy. That's a big boy. There's no problem with the one finger lift. Such a heavy device. Should be easy to come up with. I used to not care about the one finger lift, but now that I use laptops as my desktop, essentially, I use it in a laptop stand. And it is nice to be able to lift it and screen up easily. Cause a lot of times you gotta wake the laptop up and it won't work the normal way. All right, so on the display here, of course, there are significant bezels, but that's how ThinkPads roll at this point. There is a privacy cover for the camera, a not easy to move privacy cover. So you can see there, the camera is open. And if you slide over, there is a red dot there now in the camera. So again, significant bezel, but that's to be expected. Let's take a look at the star of the ThinkPad series, which is the keyboard. In porno, we call this the money shot. So very standard shop. Of course, you have escape, volume, mute, Volume down, volume up, microphone turn off, brightness settings. That's to change the display settings. So if you want to have, change your display from different screens, like if you want to have an external monitor or whatnot. This turns off your antennas, I believe. I don't know what this one does. Maybe your messaging on the side over there. Hanging up calls for like Zoom and then Teams you can set for. So there's no play pause button, which I don't like. Uh, home and insert delete. And of course, full size number keys and the lovely up and down arrows here, which we like a lot. And the page up and page down separate. So if you use your laptop a lot, you're, for business purposes, page up and page down can be pretty beneficial. Now we do very much like the keyboard. I never use this little nubbin. You told me it was a nubbin. Quite a small trackpad compared to most devices on the market today. But uh, once you get used to using these little buttons up here, you get quite used to it. And it's nice to have them. When you don't have a laptop with them, it, gets a little awkward. And of course here we have our fingerprint uh, sensor and the power button will be over here. There is a piece of plastic on the power button. How about that? So this coating will leave a little bit of fingerprints but not nothing like a razor blade. Let's go ahead and power them up. Of course you want to plug your charger in right there. All right so I'll plug them in. You can see the classic ThinkPad, the red dot over the eye will come on. And of course there is a little light back here as well and that would turn green, I believe, uh, when it's fully powered up. All right, we'll turn on the power button here. Now this is a 17.3 inch 4K screen. It does only 60 Hertz, of course. Most professional devices don't have a high refresh screen. The Dell Precision 7760 does have a 4K 120 Hertz screen and it's gorgeous. All right, it is not a touch screen, of course. Crank up the brightness. I will use the classic keyboard, which is extraordinary. Classic ThinkPad keyboard. There's something charming about the ThinkPad classic design and also something very dated looking about the classic design. So 
we are still on Windows 10. Windows 11, I'm sure, will be available, but uh, I ordered it with Windows 10. So it does both Windows Hello camera and the fingerprint. We're gonna set up the fingerprint first, of course. The Dell's devices go with the combined fingerprint power button, but I don't like having a dedicated button. If you have a pen, the number pad makes it so much better. And of course the trackpad will depress to click, of course, or you can use the dedicated mouse buttons. The display is a matte finish, so it's not all reflective. I used to think I didn't care about that, but I got the LG Gram 17 and it's like a mirror image almost and it's it's so reflective it's unpleasant so from now on I will only get matte displays. All right I think we're finally getting through the setup process. It's probably gonna pull the I don't know why when you log into multiple devices it pulls. Yeah so Windows 11 is available. I'm, I'm gonna stick to Windows 10 for now. This is not a review unit or a loaner this is something I purchased for myself and of course I'm more used to Windows 10 than 11. I do have one device on Windows 11 but I want to get a feel for the device and see how I like it using Windows 10. So the best way to do that, of course, to get a feel for it is just keep it on what I'm familiar with. All right, so here's the ThinkPad P17. It's making an unpleasant whine sound. I don't know if this is going to come through. Hopefully it's just a one-off error or something, but it keeps with that noise. This will be going back with the quickness. All right, so let's look at the specs we have. So for the processor we have the 11th gen intel core i9-11950h at 2.6 gigahertz which is a beast of a processor i also had i tried out the dell 7760 the same processor and it was crushing benchmarks for memory we have a whopping 128 gigs and that's four slots filled that's the max capacity of this device and it should be stellar for storage we have a one terabyte and it looks like it's a samsung uh, nvme Wi-Fi, we have the Intel Wi-Fi 6E, so it's going to be obviously top tier as well. Internal GPU is just the Intel UHD graphics, but the discrete graphics card is the NVIDIA RTX A5000. So this is the king of the workbench GPUs for mobile devices, of course. 16 gigs of dedicated GPU memory, which is also nice. This should be quite impressive. Let's go ahead and see what's installed right off the bat. See if we have a bunch of dumb stuff or not. So access, alarms and clocks, calculator, calendar, camera, Lenovo Vantage, that's just how they update the stuff. Cortana, of course, you have to have that. Dolby Access, Dolby Vision. Excel, Glance by Mirrod, I don't know what that is. Groove Music, which is garbage. Intel Management, a Lenovo folder with Lenovo Quick Clean. I don't know, Mail, Maps, Microsoft Edge, Office Tools, Solitaire, standard Microsoft stuff here. The NVIDIA Control Panel, Office, OneDrive, two different OneNotes, which makes no sense. Outlook, Paint 3D, People, Photos, PowerPoint, Publisher, Realtek, Audio Console, Settings, Skype, Snip and Sketch, Sticky Notes, uh, Synaptics, Fingerprint Reader, that's the fingerprint software, Thunderbolt Control Center, Tips, Voice Recorder, Weather, Windows Accessory, Windows Administrative Tools, Windows Ease of Access, Windows PowerShell, Windows Security, Windows System, Word, Xbox, Xbox Game Bar, and X-Ray Color Assistant. So let's right off the bat, let's check for some updates. I'm sure it needs them. All right, let me install some updates and we'll come back. We have the Lenovo ThinkPad Thunderbolt 4 Workstation Dock. So the dock itself has this nice red bottom to match the ThinkPad motif. Uh, on this side, we have, I guess that's locking things or like a Kensington lock or whatever they call them nowadays. A USB-C port in the front and a USB-A port in the front and a headphone jack in front. On the bottom, it has these uh, mounts, so I guess you could mount it to a wall if you wanted to. And then on the back, we have a large amount of ports. The regular power port, this combined little port guy here, uh, a Thunderbolt port, display port, HDMI port, display port two USB-A, Ethernet, and another USB-A. And here's a little on-off power button. And here is a big honking 300 watt power brick. The 300 watts here should power all your peripherals and still give you 230 for the workstation itself. So the beauty of this device is if you're going to have a, a mobile workstation, if you're gonna try to live on a desktop replacement, just have a laptop instead of a desktop. You don't want to have to plug in all this stuff every time. You know, I don't want to have to plug in a power cord, HDMI cable, USB-A port, and all that stuff. So you want a dock, but most docks can't supply the right amount of power, certainly not for a big, powerful beast like this. And so here is where this beautiful cable comes in. So if you look at the standard ThinkPad power port from the 
OEM dock for my ThinkPad P17. It's this little square guy here. So this cable on one side, we have that ThinkPad power port and then we have a Thunderbolt 4 port. Now on this side, this weird little connector here. This cable actually splits apart, but it can hold together. So for example, on my ThinkPad P17, they can still be separate and still work, but on this one, they're side by side. So you can just plug them in. So you see, it's almost like you're living that one cord life. You know, if you go full laptop and if you can just plug in one cord to a dock and have your whole laptop up and running as a desktop, it makes it a pretty nice experience. And this is essentially that, I'll be able to cheat a little bit by having the little combined cord, but it can make for a pretty nice experience. And of course, this side just plugs into here. See? And then you plug in this big 300 watt brick into this ThinkPad charger, and then that will power your device. You can have your HDMI ports plugged in here or your display port, what have you. And better yet, for a device that's made specifically for the device, for example, this ThinkPad dock for this ThinkPad, these little power buttons will work to wake the screen up or put it back to sleep. And that's a very nice implementation. You know, a normal dock, a non-workstation dock like this only puts out about 100 watts of power, sometimes 60 watts of power. So because the USB-C implementation, Thunderbolt implementation can't put out that much power. Dell has manipulated theirs to give 130 watts, but still not enough for this big Hulk and beast. So they found a way to cheat and put this cord together. And boom, you have yourself an excellent little one cord solution, which is pretty nice. All right, I don't have the Dell Precision here anymore, but this is one benefit Again, if you're going for comparing ThinkPad versus the Dell Precision, the ThinkPad has their own dock, right, with this little double core power action. There is a Dell Precision version of this, or but what they use is two Thunderbolt ports. And I don't think it gets the full power. I think their device draws 240. And if you use their two Thunderbolt ports plugged in simultaneously, it does a similar little guy like this. I guess that's magnetic. But so it's sort of like one cord, but instead of giving it the full 240, it only gives it about 210, which should get you by most of the time, but it will eventually drain the power. Whereas this one should not, since it's giving you the same 230 watts that the regular power cord should give you. Even though, spoiler alert, when I'm game on this, it will still drain the power beyond the power adapter and dip to the battery power. That's not acceptable. But that's another problem. At least we're still getting the amount of power you're supposed to get as opposed to the Dell not giving you the amount of power you're supposed to get. But, and that's also a Thunderbolt 3 workstation and this is Thunderbolt 4. I would assume the Dell's gonna come out with a Thunderbolt 3, but they don't currently have one at the time of this recording. All right, on the left here is my Dell XPS 9710. And this is the Lenovo ThinkPad P17. You can see the monstrous size difference. I would say the most likely competitor to this is either gonna be the HP whatever they call their workstation, ZBook or something, and the Dell Precision 7760, which I did have and I made a video on, but I don't have it right now, so it's not gonna be in this part of the video. Don't make a dedicated video for that. So while this is a 17 inch 16 by 10 display, and this is a 17.3 inch display, there's still a massive size discrepancy between these two devices. As you can tell if you line them up corner to corner, I mean, it's quite ridiculous looking. To even imagine these are the same or similar 17 inch screens. Obviously the ThinkPad has a lot more power and a lot more ports. Although the Dell XPS 9710, I'd say it's no slouch. There you can see a little back to back action. It's pretty crazy. We got a solid three fingers there between the Dell XPS 9710, 17 inch, 16 by 10 4K screen, 17.3 inch, 4K screen with 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Well, it's pretty bonkers looking there. If you put them like this, you can still see just how much larger the keyboard deck sits up. And of course, if you turn them both on, you can see the massive screen difference. Basically, almost no bezel around the Dell and pretty much all the bezel you can possibly get around the ThinkPad. But again, they're meant for two different Devices, this is a workstation. It's a hard comparison because I would want this keyboard, but I want this screen, but I do want some bottom metal. Fingerprint wise, we got a, on the keyboard here and on the ThinkPad, of course it has a dedicated fingerprint sensor. Just looking at the displays, it's really a no contest. The Dell XPS 97 is way better, but again, this is the best screen that I have on any laptop. Equally silly is the trackpad comparison. You can see how this one is 
there. And then the Dell is this gigantic one. You know, it's bigger than my whole hand. I do not like this keyboard though. This is one of my least favorite keyboards. I do like the trackpad and the speakers here are probably the best on a Windows device. And the display for not gaming purposes is one of the best on a Windows device. And this is one of the best keyboards on the ThinkPad for a Windows device. I find the trackpad okay. I do like having the buttons. You get used to them after a while. I never use the nubbin. The speakers are all right as well. Nothing mind blowing here. But we can do a little test. All right, we're gonna try a little ghost strip on the ThinkPad. Now we're at 100 volume. All right, so I would never listen to it 100 volume, but it sounds like garbage. Garbage is not a fair assessment. Sounds fine, I guess, but the quality on the Dell will be instantly recognizable. We'll also go up to 100. It gets so much louder. That was 100, this is 50, so at 50. So it actually still sounds pretty good, 50. All right, so again, it's no contest. The Dell XPS 9710 is way better for speakers. There's nothing wrong with the ThinkPad speakers. And again, I don't generally listen to music like that on here. So I usually use headphones or anything like that, but I would use it in my lap to edit a video or something like that. And the speakers would be perfectly acceptable for that. Obviously not as nice as the Dell XPS 9710, but you would have more power, of course, than this guy here. And of course, a much better keyboard. I don't think we already covered the ports, but there's way more ports on the ThinkPad itself. More options for storage, drives, and RAM, and the whole shebang, right? So there is a definite reason to have the ThinkPad, but I bought and paid for the Dell XPS 9710 with my own money. Yeah, it's pretty great. If I had to choose between the two, I thought I would have chose the ThinkPad. But my ThinkPad, spoiler alert, has a super annoying coil line. If I'm getting rid of that, fans are insanely loud and the battery didn't hang out while gaming. We'll show that in other videos. The SD card slot on the ThinkPad, it will go all the way in the device like that and be spring loaded. So it ejects with a spring. I much prefer that to how the Dell XPS 9710, it kind of hangs out like that. Now, however, it's not spring loaded. So I don't have this problem on my ThinkPad, but on the Razer Blade laptop I had one point, I did accidentally eject it because of the spring load mechanism. But you know, I've had no problems with the Dell. But I always feel like when they stick out like that, you could potentially break it. I don't have that concern on you know, the ThinkPad when it goes all the way in like that. All right, here's my actual backpack I've had for many years. This was when I was a businessman going to an office or a businessman traveling. I had the same backpack, been a big fan of it. A company of mine bought it many years ago. You can see it's all scuffed up. Then they took it back. So I found the exact same one and bought it again. It's whatever this Winger brand is. Anyhow, I've had no problems with, I've always used this backpack and it's fit every laptop I've ever had just fine until this big son of a bitch. So you can see, I'm not lying, right? This is my actual backpack. It's full of, here's my charging brick for my Dell XPS 97 in here, which is laughably small compared to the monster brick that is the ThinkPad. All right, that's crazy. Massive, I mean, this feels like nothing in my hand compared to this brick. So this is the pouch for the laptop, right? There's a little padded area there for the laptop to go in. Here's my LG Gram 17 inch laptop. Fits in there, no problem whatsoever. The aforementioned Dell XPS 9710 fits in there, no problem. The Dell Precision 7760 fits in there, no problem. This one does technically fit, but as you can tell, I mean, we're right there. <laughs> I mean, you're on the brim. So yes, it will fit, but I think I have a relatively big backpack. You can tell with other laptops. I mean, they go way in there. You got, you got a lot of room before you're hitting that top of that laptop. And especially if you're trying to carry two laptops, like I often do, it's gonna be an unpleasant day with this big bad boy in here. Mainly because of the weight, of course, but the size is not gonna help either, especially if we throw that brick in there. But technically it does fit in my actual backpack. All right, so here is my LG Gram, and here is my ThinkPad P17. This one is 17.0 inches, 
16 by 10 display, but QHD, and this one is 17.3 inches, 16 by 9 and 4K. This one also has a fingerprint on the power sensor. And of course the ThinkPad has it where it's standard it usually is, right? The Gram, even though it is QHD screen, it looks great because it's not a matte display, it's a glossy display. So it looks gorgeous. It does have a ridiculous amount of reflection. You see that's my light right here. Right. And trust me, it's like a mirror image half the time when you're recording videos on it. Now in personal use, in my house, for the way the lighting is, I don't really see a problem other than recording here. However, I was traveling this past couple of weeks to my mom's house and she has old lady overhead lights and got to be kind of hard to see on it at times, which I wouldn't have that problem with a gloss screen like the ThinkPad. So like this, if I was to use it on my lap, it could be a problem somewhere uh, because of the screen. And this one, if you're gonna use it on your lap, it could be a problem where, because it weighs 80 pounds and it gets loud. But this display should work fine. This thing weighs less than three pounds. It's quite amazing. This guy, I think eight pounds maybe. I mean, it's uh, a beefy boy. Woo! Two uh, very different use cases for these laptops, of course. You can see how still the, even though a little bit of bezel on the gram here, it doesn't compare to the bezel on the ThinkPad, of course, but a little bit more than the Dell XPS 9710. So again, two very different laptops for two very different use cases. But this one does have a number pad and a keyboard that I do like a lot. It's nowhere near as good as the ThinkPad keyboard, but it is a pretty great keyboard nonetheless. And of course, back to back. Now let's see, both are nice black laptops, pretty fresh. Anyhow, this is just to show what a polar opposite you can get in a 17 inch screen. Now this one is super light. It does have more ports than the XPS 9710, but it has a micro SD card slot, USB-A ports, HDMI, and Thunderbolt. Its charger is not here currently. It's at my mom's house where I was traveling to. It's about this big, which is pretty funny, compared, especially when you compare it to this monster. However, this one does not have a dedicated graphics card, and of course gaming is not going to be good, and, not, and certainly any kind of the workstation applications you want to use for this would be a problem. Point of me showing these two, I initially started on this quest to have myself a laptop to replace a desktop with a laptop which is why i looked at thinkpads and high powered dell devices and this gram has kind of changed my thought process a little bit i do like having all my power in one device like the thinkpad but oftentimes when you're traveling it is not a great working area for example my mom's house she had her knee replaced she's a senior citizen she does not have a home office she has a computer room that literally has an old kitchen chair pulled up to it. So you're going to break your back trying to sit in that and work for hours on end. She has a bunch of cats. So if I try to work in the living room area and the recliner, the cats are going to climb all over you and get on your workspace. So my point is, if you don't need this heavy eight pound device for the workstation, you know, portable workstationness of it, it's much better working on something thin light like this that you can move around with you when you need it. Now, of course, it won't have this kind of power, but for me, I thought that I needed this kind of power to be mobile, but I feel like that's gonna be more expensive, but I'm gonna use a desktop and then this guy, basically, and send this guy packing. And I'll ultimately have more power in the desktop than this guy will give me, and obviously much more portability of this guy. And again, I am not a mobile workstation application user. The A series graphics card didn't work great for me. Gaming performance was okay, nothing terrible of course, but battery life was awful and even the power of draw while playing games is not great. So another reason this is not gonna be the device for me as much as I want it to be. It's just, it's not my friend. So uh, in conclusion, if you needed a workstation like this, if your work's paying for it, I say get the Dell Precision 7760. I'll have a video comparing them both, but the Dell is a lot more expensive, but I liked it better than the ThinkPad. If you're paying for it yourself, you get a lot more bang for your buck on the ThinkPad, but this guy's also heavier and louder and not as pleasant to use. However, the keyboard, I think is nicer than the Precision. Everything else is nicer on the Dell Precision. All right, thanks for checking me out. I'm gonna return mine because it made the fan. Oh, I should put that too. Normally I've had really good experiences with Lenovo customer service. This one I did not. I got a great price on it. And then when I noticed the fan noise super irritating me, I said, hey, uh, I want to re either return it 
or I'm willing to try a new one if you want to swap me out. And they said, sure, we'll give you a replacement. And for your troubles, we'll take an extra like 8% off of here, which is a couple hundred bucks. Uh, so I was like, sure, sounds like a great deal. And they said they would push back my return date. And spoiler alert, I never got a follow-up email. I never got a new device. I never got my discount. <laughs> so <laughs> now I'm just burning through my return window. I could open a new chat and chart again, but I've ultimately decided that even without the whining, irritating noise, it's just still not for me. So if it's for you, I hope this is helpful. If it's not, if you're trying to, you're on the fence, uh, again, check out the Dell products. I've been a big fan of them. And I was a big ThinkPad fan, so it's, it's a shame. All right, thanks for checking me out.